I remember a story from 2007 Rugby World Cup. We're about to make our way over to France. You know, like sitting there in first class, going, "How good's this?" And we uh, we got a, we, we got found a, a text. <laughs> we got a marker <laughs> and made him look like aggro, the puppet, just like straight across his forehead. And because once once you once you wake up and you're going into land, you have to put your suits back on. Like, he's funny soon. And everyone from back in business class at this point starts to see that. Yeah. And he had no clue. Cool, uh, I've got no yeah. idea why that World Cup never worked out. To be honest. <laughs> Welcome to another episode of the Aussie Rugby Show brought to you by Extra Hop. Stops breaches 84% faster. I'm Louise Ransom, joined as always by Drew Mitchell, Stephen Hoyles, Sean Maloney. Hoylesley, we are on the right side of the bridge. Oh, this come week. on. Yeah, come right. on. South side, east side, a uh, bit of a trip for Sean. Oh. Down at Latham Park, Lou. So this is uh, home of the Could You See Horses, the junior side, uh, one of the Ramwick teams in the junior comp here. Ramwick's out there training behind us. I've had a lot of good memories here, as has Drew. Yeah. Sean, well, not, not so much. <laughs> you cried last time you were here. Last time I was here, I was 14 years of age. I got punched in the head playing against Ramwick juniors. Jeez. I haven't been back since, and I don't feel great about being here now either. Yeah, we're tough on this side of the bridge, <laughs> You're real <mate>. tough. <laughs> yeah, starting young. What did you do to get punched? Just tackled a dude. <laughs> His name was Aquila. Did not like being tackled. Did not get the memo. Didn't okay. all get the memo. Hopefully, have a better time this uh, trip, Sean. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Guys, what got you from the weekend? What caught your eye? Uh, to be honest, what got me was a bit of general anaesthetic. I was pretty high all weekend on endo. And, uh, <laughs> you, you had an operation. Yeah, sorry, sorry. <laughs> let me, let me get, get a bit of context there. I had a knee operation last week. So because when you did the kids classic clinic. Classic yeah. the kids Giving clinic, back, trying to give yeah. back to the game. It hurt my knee and I, I uh, yeah, had to clean well out done. through the week. So I was laid up, uh, watching some sport, watching some Animal Planet. Okay, the horse racing. Um, but yeah, it was good, it was good. What got you? Uh, I, you know what got me? I had a pretty quiet weekend, but the whole 20 years since the Sydney Olympics. Mm. Oh, yeah. Started looking at a few of the amazing Olympics. events. Uh, Nikki one Webster. thing, Yeah, Nikki Webster, love yeah. that. Uh, Strawberry kisses. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> what a tune. Yeah. Um, only thing better than that was Umbot from uh, oh, Hanson. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. um, but too. not a Sydney Olympic event, but Kathy Freeman's run that we saw on social media. Yeah, the, the store, store gift. Yeah. 54 metres. It just reminded me of just how good a time 20 years ago was. City just over here, how lucky we were. It was a great Olympics. I like that we can afford rights to the 1994 <laughs> store gift and not the 2000 <laughs> Olympics for the vision. Uh, speaking of the golden era of Aussie sport, 2000, uh, that was around the time that Gordon Bray was calling a lot of test matches as well. Yep. He was back calling at the weekend, yeah. the, the voice of Australian wow. rugby, one of the great men. I went in out and uh, interviewed him last year, did a podcast at his joint. He's the smoothest dude you'll ever meet. So lovely. And it was awesome seeing him back commentating Shoot Shield on the weekend. It is was it true epic. that he did that just for free membership? Next yeah, he just wanted a membership, yeah, just get down and they just saunter around. Mm. I think someone's had a lender, Gordon, if he's just done that for a membership at East yeah. next year. Uh, he's he's too, great, nice, too nice. Too nice. You're right, he, he is, is too yeah. nice. Lou, what do you got? Well, look at me, Shawnee, is the fact that the Rugby Championship will be here on Australian soil. It's a big story of the week as well. Let's move into those. Uh, guys, it's so exciting. We have so much rugby here later in the year in a window where we wouldn't normally have that rugby here on home soil. Yeah, I mean, it's exciting. I think it, there was always a little bit of uncertainty whether we're going to see international rugby. So straight off the bat, it's great that we're, yeah. we're going to see Test Match footy and for it to be here in Australia, I think there's going to be, what, two up there in Queensland, a double header, mm. and then the rest here in, in New South Wales. I think it's fantastic. This time last week, we were saying there'll be no rugby championship yeah. full stop. It's amazing how quickly and how fluid the whole situation is. But part of the reason, correct me if I'm wrong, is that we're able to have it in Australia is that our quarantine is a little more relaxed mm. than in New Zealand in terms yeah. of teams being able to train with one another. Yeah, and right. that's what cost NZ those first two, maybe almost those first two bledders, those. Now they've spun it around again. Yes, yeah, so they've even, only in the last a couple of days yeah. they've changed that again to say that we can go there and the, 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 the restrictions were just too harsh and mm. I was thinking the players are going to have so to get hard. there and spend yeah. five days in a hotel room on their own and it was, it was just too much to ask and there was always going to be our version, their version and fighting and stuff in the, the paper but who cares, like we've got games of footy coming up and that's, that, and that's the most important thing. And the two Bledisloes over in New Zealand are Sunday afternoon. Yeah. Yes. Yes. one thirty pm kickoff time on the eastern side of Australia in New South Wales Just at least. Just be getting least. up. It'll be... <laughs> getting, out of bed, getting up or getting home, Drew. Oh, it's what we used to see when we were kids, like yeah. that's what I remember. Like, do you remember the likes I can't of... remember, when was the last time there was a Sunday Bledisloe, do you think? Mm. 
Do you reckon I, 80s? I, no, I reckon, oh, I don't oh. know what day, but I remember the daytime tests over there, like I, I can think, last one I remember is around about like, Eelsie or Sturlow kicking that. Yeah. Yes, the, that's, yeah. that's goal. That was the last mind, time. Yeah. The, the most important thing out of all that, I don't care what day it's on, is it's day game, you know, yeah. like just mm. the quality of footy. I know we're so used to seeing footy games at night and it's, it is what it is because of TV and whatnot, but, but day games, it's just a different players though, love yeah. playing day games. No matter what anyone says, they love playing at 3 p.m. Growing up, you play all your school footy, everything's at yeah. 3 o'clock, club footy True. is at 3 o'clock, and then their tra all their training is always during the afternoon. No one's training at night time, uh, you know, in the professional mm. sense. So a lot of what they're used to and what their, their, their habits are in afternoon yeah. and a lot, you know, all the, the, the ball handling, all that sort of stuff at training, they're, they're training in afternoon times and then now they obviously get to play in that in that time yeah. slot. 16 uncapped players in total. It is a large squad, but yeah. what do you make of it, Drew? Well, I mean, I, I thought there's probably more green than gold in, the, in that sense because there are so many uncapped. There's not many, there's not a, a huge amount of experience in that squad. But did I you, think you've thought about that line for a while. Did you thought about, about it today. Yeah. I've about it today. So if anyone else takes it, <laughs> it's a good line. It's, very good. it's really good. Um, but, no, but you look at it and I, I think. Generally speaking, I think um, you know a lot of the the dialogue on on socials and stuff for quite a long time now is to give these younger the next young generation a chance. So they've got their chance now. They've they've got their you know there's a, a potential for them to earn a jersey and then and to wear it this year and then we'll see how they go. Yeah. Well, the, the big thing is every time there's a squad announcement and it's a, a new coach, there's generally a larger yeah. squad. So there's a whole lot of names being named that haven't been involved before, but they haven't been picked for a test yet. So they could still come up with a an experienced test side, mm. it's still going to have less experience than what the World Cup side had, so depending on what they come up with, but I, I like the idea of a lot of young guys being in there and training and, and learning that, yeah, like, the squad point of view, you've got to look towards the 23 World Cup, but playing the All Blacks, I don't think we look, we don't look too far ahead. The, the interesting thing though, was there was a lot of chat last week about uh, changing the Giddo law and having two players that don't quite yeah. meet that threshold of 60, and there was no mention of anyone that's playing overseas. Are, are we thinking they'll add to that? Would be added to it in terms like of the number of players. players you think? Still, I mean, if you, if you have those two. Yeah. I mean, they've said Wallabies. Well, it's not just the two. It's also they could still pick players who've got more than 60 as well. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. Like, there's just been no chat of anyone from overseas, even though like they kind of went out of their way to make a yeah. point mm. of it last week. Mm. So it might be a bit more of a like a watch this space type of scenario, but interesting. Do you think they picked two because they have two players in mind? And I guess... Uh, I just think it, it's... I think it's weak to be honest. Like you, either, you go all in or you don't. Like, two, like why is two the, the magic number? That's what you know? I, like, I, I just don't I get like that. To know. Like at least last, or the last time they changed the rule, they made it sixty or seven years. Um, you know, like, you know, in rugby Australia's um, you know system, that type of thing. Like they, they kind of, they explained why you met that threshold. As now it's just two, just just because they've picked yeah. two, like two out of what. I'm all for picking from overseas as many as we need to until yeah. we come up with our best version of what the professional competition looks like. In this time at the moment where there's so much uncertainty, let's park that to the side and yeah. let's get the best like players playing in Wallaby Jersey. If four is what's going to make our team better, then yeah. why Absolutely. Not? To give you some idea as to the depth, though, that he's working with, yeah. guys that missed out, Nice Arani. Yeah. There are many. You guys were huge fans of his through Super Rugby AU. He misses a ticket yeah. and... Kurandrani as well, who was the starting yeah. center Dempsey for the too. World Cup last yeah, year. Yeah, Dempsey, yeah, yeah, yeah. Dempsey back was playing himself in into some form. Yeah. So it just shows you that Rennie's got some really yeah. decent cattle there to go with. Well, Sean, you've brought something new to the table this week. I sure have, gang. Random rugby moments. This brought about by COVID grounding me and me going down the deepest of rabbit holes. I've just been scurrying around the tubes, YouTubes chasing <laughs> YouTube? moments. Cue it Randy up. Here is this week's first ever tubes. random <laughs> rugby moments. Here we go, 1984. Five Cup Final, Wallabies, Australia versus the public school Wanderers. It's spicy early on, fellas. Look at the Wallabies here come through, taking some heads off. Oh, Headshot. Yeah, no, Mark Roger Ellis. Gould here. Head chop. Yeah. Bang, right? So they're <laughs> yeah. into the locals here. This is a public school Wanderers. Oh, this is how he becomes yeah. so popular. Furious. This yeah. is it. Roger Gould, hated yeah. over in that part of the world. Bang, 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 removing some heads. But now some gold on the rugby front. We're talking so Glenn Ella. Look, no, look for, yeah, you're right. Yeah. Point of in here out the back for Glenn Ella. Glenn Ella gets through. Good, Wait for this nut to Pete Lucas. Wait for it. Oh, bang. Stop. In the wet with the old school footy, the leather ball, away they go. This is 85. That's not bad. Have another look wow. at that. Oh, that's juicy. Some nice flowing locks too. Delicious. Yeah. Check this out. Liner. Michael Liner to Ella. Ella back for Liner. Can Goes to point of it. That's Campo. Yeah. Look at him. Cleanest jersey on the field by a stretch in the mud. And away he goes for uh, a green and gold win over there in Hong Kong in 85. How He's, good is that? Man, that might be why you, you notice Australia gave them they get yeah, booed yeah, from yeah. start to finish. Yeah. Because maybe that from game. From that game from 1985. I, I wasn't aware of that. When I played uh, in Hong Kong Sevens, 
you know when Billy, Billy, oh, is it Billy Brown? It's the, the, not Billy Brown. Uh, Billy, 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 uh, Billy uh, Bowden, 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 yeah, Bowden, yeah. Bowden, yeah, the, yeah. The, the cricket umpire, yeah, right? Yeah. And you do that when everyone hit a six. And so it was a big, it's sort of big, at the time that we went over and we said, all right, first game, we're playing Kenya, whoever scores first has to do that, right? And I didn't know about the booing and all that, and I went up and I scored the first try and everyone's like, Tan is a wanker. <laughs> and I didn't, wasn't really sure what was going on. Scored the second try, Tan is, like even, even more, Tan is a wanker. Anyway, Kenya beat us, first team, first team to lose to Kenya, and Tan was a wanker. Yeah, but that's, that's probably why. There you go. Yeah, well, that's I a nice way to kick I it off. I knew why we're so unpopular. Yeah. Yeah. Blame those guys. Do you Hong Kong, Sean? Oh, let's not get started. There's this week's random rugby nice, moment, Luke. I like it. Let's talk about Super Rugby AU. Big week coming up. But firstly, let's talk about the weekend's action. Guys, what did you like? Well, I mean, I think we all picked the Reds to go through. So mm. um, I think we've ended up with the two best teams in um, Super Rugby Australia mm. going head-to-head -head this weekend in the grand final. And, and I think more specifically, I, I've liked the way that James O'Connor's played the season and and just controlled that uh, that Reds backline, not just the backline, also the the position yeah. of you know and where they played in certain parts of the field and that type of thing. I think you know, I mean, it's been spoken about the turnaround from the James that we, we knew uh, to and the journey that he's been on. He speaks about it so much about the journey that he's been on and 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 the man that now um, you know sort of stands in front of us and plays now. It's a remarkable, um, I guess, transformation. I really. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. And, and and just the way he's playing. I think it it's even. That's why I think now he's suited to being a 10. I think mm. prior to yeah. all this stuff going on, I think yeah. James thought about James first. The, the, so that was the, the Lions 10. 10 wasn't ready to be well, a 10. Because James would think about himself first and, and look yeah. for an opportunity for himself. And I think in, in some ways it was a reflection of where he was at at the time. Mm -hmm. And now, like you look at him, he's team first, he's yeah, everything. 100%. And he's looking to set people up. Even the line break he made, yeah. he actually, that happened by default because he was trying to play to the inside yeah. and they just fell for it so well. So he had no other option but to run. But you're right, five, ten years ago, He's looking to run that himself, yeah. and so he's, he's, he was predictable then, I suppose. But oh, look, I thought it was a, a pretty brutal game, to be honest. Like, I, I hope we don't lose too many guys for too long. Like, mm. we saw Tamil Gulf, we saw uh, Dan Halapetti. Yeah. Patea was the main one. Like, that yeah. was, uh, yeah, I'm hoping he's playing this weekend, but geez, he's well, losing. as well. Yeah. Do you know what I'm going to do? You know how people have a voodoo doll to, like, put people down? Do the opposite. I'm going to go the reverse voodoo oh, doll. Yeah. I'm going to get a, 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 a Geordie, yeah, a Geordie Pattaya. Doll, yeah. and I'll, I'll came round. You do I'll, the mop I'll hair and everything. I'll do the hair, yeah, no problems. Okay. I'll put some product through. I'll apply. You, you, I'll apply. Some would hydrate, Sean does. Does. I'll I'll apply. a numerous amount of wigs at home. <laughs> Put on air. He does have a lot of wigs at home. He's got very. He, weird. he surely can't keep getting injured. Yeah. Hey, try the weekend. Um, surely goes on a streak soon because he. I mean, we saw him score that opening try. What I really liked, Lou, was the fact that those guys that left that chose not to take the pay cut. They're very, and this is with the greatest respect, they've been quickly <laughs> forgotten because guys like Angus Blythe stood up on the yeah, weekend yeah. in the place of guys like Smiley. Like, Sm old Smiley. <laughs> he just plays 80 minutes with a smile on his face. Yeah, he though. doesn't stop smiling. It's fascinating. Yeah. I'm waiting for him to get angry, but like people are lipping him he's, up. He's, he's just smiling. He's right? fascinated with anyone who can smile. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't it. do it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if you're trying to give him reference. That, they think when I smile, I smile with an upside down. You don't know how to smile. It's because you do. That's what we think. I do. You're grumpy. How do you know? Well, now you got your arms crossed. You're going to load on the Rebels. Well, I don't want to unload on him. Like, a lot of people think that it's like this group and this group of players. I, it's nothing to do with that. It's the club and it's the future and it's uh, they made a profit this year. Like, and everyone's going, well done, great, which just highlights that the model isn't really that good if you only make a profit when you're not playing games at home. So you've led me down the path again, Lou. I don't know how I've got here. <laughs> but like, it's pretty easy. Again, like, you know what? They are 12 weeks away from action. home. They are 12 yeah. weeks away from home. They did well to get there. They actually probably played, I thought they were really in it at half time, that, that 10, try 10, from yeah, Marika. Marika. So, that group of players, it would have been a, a really tough few months, but good on them for doing it, same as the force. But, yeah, we've got the two best sides in the final, so that's good. Well, yeah, let's talk about the final now. Uh, have you got a favourite leading into this game? Um, you know what, I think a month ago I would have said the Brumbies, but mm. now looking at it, I think the, the style of footy that the Reds are playing, I think you look at the two games they played, um, one went down to the wire, uh, which was played in Cameron, and mm. the Reds smoked them up there in, in Queensland. So you'd have to say, you know, I guess in totality, the Reds might have bit of momentum going into this one which uh you know the Brumbies yeah. having the week off and, so, and dangerous I th territory I think the the stage of the the majority of the Reds players they're young they've they've been through the very worst of it with Queensland Reds yeah. like a lot of those guys are with Brad Thorne in NRC four or five years ago so I just feel the confidence in the Reds is going to be a really powerful thing on the weekend and confidence and momentum in sport is a is a really big thing you don't need to be the best side all year you just need to be the best side yeah. for one game as it turns out now and I still think the Brumbies, if you played a, a five-game series, the Brumbies would probably 
cover them yeah. three to two. Or, yeah. But I, I just I think the Reds are going to go down to Canberra with a hell of a lot of confidence. When you talk about that confidence, it reminds me of that Reds team who went through those shitty years, uh, 08, 09, yeah. 2010. Oh, the 10, it's sort of started around. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, but then they rode that nine with you know horrendous. What I mean? So yeah, they're yeah. very similar, yeah. the 13 years on their matching. I think they're, coming in, they're out the in for other a couple side. of good years, Queensland. And mm. I, I really do think they're on, I can't find a, before this, I was thinking, where's the weakness? Who don't you? Like, there's always someone you think, I'm not sure about that position. Yeah. I, do, I can't find that in the Reds at the moment. Well, that side you're talking about uh, back in that t- so 2011 era, they were quite young. This side's quite young. We've seen Brad Thorne do the clean out that mm. he wanted to do there quite controversially at times. It's, it's going to be intriguing to see this weekend if, if they do in, get over the line. Just that storyline around the Queensland Reds and almost, you know, Brad Thorne's method might work. Yeah, I mean, I, I think. A lot of us probably questioned it at some point, just in, in the in the manner and the, the way that he just got rid of so much experience in one go. And and I think, you know, for a lot of the time in rugby and in, even in professional sport, you hear that we're in this sort of like, you know, rebuilding phase and all that sort of stuff. And a lot of it's just, just yeah. chat, right? Yeah. But it, 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 it starts to look now like Brad Thorne was genuinely doing it. Like there's a lot of method to, to what he was doing in terms of the plays he was letting go, the plays he was bringing through, the NRC program that he had, you know, with Queensland Country, but obviously also had an eye on the Brisbane City team. The, the one thing I think maybe the Brumbies have got an advantage over the Reds is their depth on the, on the bench. I, I yeah. just think that the Brumbies have just got such, you know, they've got a deep list and they get a lot off their bench. So, um, I mean, Reds might be in a position where they don't maybe necessarily have to get a lot from their bench. Um, Whereas you know the Brumbies, they just they just bring on so much experience um, at any moment. So that's probably the one area I think the Brumbies might have something on them. But geez, I'm still thinking I'm going to go with the Reds. Yeah, I, I think the Brumbies will win. And, and you know what? Over the last three years, they've been the former Australian side, yeah. so it would be probably fit in if they did. And um, but it's grand final, you, 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 you don't, don't get yeah get what you exactly. Deserve, so yeah. I, I look at them and go, the, the Brumbies will need to adjust though. If things don't work out up front, and they can't rely on their scrum and their driving more. They're going to have to have other options, and that's where I think, you know, I look at it now and go, Queensland probably will disrupt their their scrum's been phenomenal the last couple yeah. of weeks. I think if the Brumbies need to go away from their stock standard, you know, they're probably not going to get three more tries because I can guarantee you, Brad Thorne's probably just spent the last two weeks preparing for the the Brumbies strengths. Gone but not forgotten the time where we remember players for their efforts both on and off the rugby field. We've picked some on this week, Stephen Hoyles, that's uh, pretty close to the club here. Well, he's still actually down here, funnily enough. It's Adam Fry. He uh, lives just across the road and he's beanie. still playing first grade for, for Randwick. He's 40-odd years of age and, um, yeah, we'll talk about Adam Fry. The nickname Hass, we all know him as Hass. Yeah. Uh, that came from when we first went to the Brumbies. He was, everyone, that was back in a boardy generation and he just turned up in a pair of cozies and so he was like a young Hasselhoff and, ah, and although for a little, gotcha. for a very short period of time he was known as Compass Why? because on the way back down to Canberra, like a lot of players used to live in Sydney and commute over the weekend and whatnot, he and Owen Finnegan were driving back down to Canberra and they did a pit stop in one of the McDonald's there as you do. Sutton Forest. Sutton Forest yep. and then got back on the highway and didn't realise until he got to the lights at Liverpool that he'd come back the wrong way. <laughs> it was late to train and Eddie Jones thought it was the best thing ever, nicknamed him Compass. Compass! He was like an hour and a half late to training. He got yelled at the whole training session while Owen just laughed but the, Owen was just as guilty so Hass quickly became Compass but Hass is stuck. Uh, I remember a story from 2007 Rugby World Cup. We're about to make our way over to France, and whatever reason, there were seven seats available in first class. And now I don't. Looking back on it, I don't know how this played out because <laughs> I would have thought 100% the Gregans, the Larkhams, yeah. like the it was, old no, it, was, it was out of a draw. I, I, I know, but it. I just don't know how they even <laughs> in, in, got like, allow that. Yeah. <laughs> there was literally every everyone's name went into like into a hat, and they yes. just pulled seven names. And my name, yeah. Paul's name, uh, Compass's <laughs> name came out. And so we just like walk up to, up to and it was like David Lyons, Rocky, Rocky Olsen yeah. was up there. Um, and we're, you know, like sitting there in first class going, how good's this? We've had a had our meal, um, maybe had like, you know, a couple of champagne and started <laughs> to indul- indulge a little bit as you do, right? I mean, I was like, how good's this? But there was an, an elderly gentleman there that whose seat wouldn't recline. And we, we'd had a few by this point and, uh, and Hass just went, mate, you know what? Go and take my seat, I'll, I'll sit on yours. Like, we're going 23 hours to France. <laughs> And and has, I don't know, didn't, probably didn't think about it at the time, but he ended up just like basically in an economy seat, just like <laughs> very and, short legs are. Yeah, yeah, he's got short legs. He's weird. Yeah, yeah. And then he was sitting on the floor with his just his head up on my, like yeah. where your bum would be. That's where he found him asleep with his head on it. <laughs> yeah, and so you know, obviously like a tired kid at the movies. <laughs> we, we, had our, we had our sleepers and stuff just to, to ensure we got into the, the time zone and things. And 
and we uh, we got a, we got we a marker. We got a marker, <laughs> and made him look like Agro the puppet, just like straight across his forehead. And because once once you once you wake up and you're going into land, you have to put your suits back on. Like, and he's been his suit on, and everyone from back in business class at this point starts to see <laughs> And he had no clue about it. Oh, jeez, it was funny. Um, I've got no idea why that World Cup never worked out. To be <laughs> <laughs> what did we lose in the corners? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, has. But, I mean, look, he loves the game so much, which is why he's still running around, putting his body through absolute all sorts, scrummaging, Isn't also he? up the front, <laughs> like, in the position. I'll give you a quick, so he's still playing. He lives 150 metres from where we are here. About four weeks ago, he had a grade one medial ligament, and his wife was like, you can't play, your, your, foot, your knee's no good. She didn't think he was playing. He told his wife he was going down just to help out. She saw later on Instagram when first grader singing McNamara's band, she saw her husband in the middle with his footy gear on and his boots on singing a song with his knee straps. So there was a moment. It's like Rugby Anonymous. It's like he's got an addiction and he just has to sneak here everywhere. There was a moment in the game at the weekend where he took a quick tap and I thought he'd been tranquilised. I thought someone had shot him with a grade A hippo dart. Mm. He just kind of was stuck in slow mode. Yeah. He'd already played a full game of twos and yeah. nearly yeah, yeah. Insane. Yeah. He can't get enough of it. Yeah. Good man, gone, but not forgotten. Yeah. Well, let's dive into the Aussie Rugby Show mailbag for this week and see what's happening. Brought to you by Extra Hop, Sean. Yeah, Extra Hop stops breaches 84% faster. That's quick. Check them out at extrahop.com. Okay, you let's... like that? That was smooth. Yeah. Yeah. Real smooth. Yeah, it's smooth. Well done. Yeah. What do we got, Luke? What's our first question? Well, first... Media manager for Extra Hop now. <laughs> <laughs> Available. <laughs> Side hustle. And willing. <laughs> we'll travel. Dave... <laughs> okay, question. Questions. Damien Quinn on Facebook says, Love the show. Question for the panel. What are some of the best crowd sledges you've copped or heard? Oh, a lot of the crowd ones you probably can't really repeat too yeah. much. But um, actually, this one I'm going to say you probably couldn't, shouldn't repeat. But well, it's not your words. Yeah. Well, when I first started playing first grade back in... Uh, <laughs> University of Queensland days, I was 19. I was, at that point, I was like a nice little sweet boy, didn't really like beer. I was like just, you know, I was clean. Like, yeah, I was clean. Yeah, I was clean cut. Yeah. Just, before I met all those old blokes and <laughs> got tarnished. Anyway, um, I was playing against uh, the Gold Coast Breakers. Grant Batty, the former all black, was a coach there uh, of that side, and his son was playing halfback. And I, I made this sort of like half break. I was coming up to Nathan Williams, the, the former yeah. Reds fullback. He was uh, the opposing fullback. And I've just been sniped, pinged my hemi, and I'm like in all sorts on the ground. and. <laughs> Great baddie's son, Sam, I think his name's Sam, he came up to me and I'm like, literally like, squealing like a pig on the ground. He goes, I hope it hurts and it hurts all year, you c <laughs> Excuse me, excuse me, Lou, but is it, is it like, I was just like, how can you real. say that? Like, I was like, mate, like, I'm, I'm, I'm no threat to you anymore. Like, anyway, so that was one stage that, like, obviously Still I just got past that, it. Yeah, pretty, pretty yeah you have let go of that. Yeah, yeah. It's all fine, it's um, fine. Yeah. Yeah, I don't, I don't really, yeah, that was, I'm not going to be able to beat that. I, this wasn't a crowd uh, sledge, this was, it was Bucky's both, that's where our friend Adam Fry was just speaking about. Mm. Adam got a little bit lippy against Bucky's and all Bucky just said was, shut up dwarf boy. <laughs> <laughs> and the whole forward pack of the Tars just started laughing and everyone goes, ah, dwarf boy. <laughs> He's like, you got to shut up too. Like, <laughs> is, that, is that PC? He said it, not me. Oh, yeah. Bucky said Bucky it. Bucky said yeah, it. Yeah. Sent him a note. Yeah. Uh, the worst I ever caught was from actually Hoylesy, and he didn't even say anything. He just laughed at me. He ran around me like three or four times in a row. <laughs> Ring of feet, and either. he just laughed at me. There is nothing more dehumanising. My manhood was stripped away from me being laughed at on the way through try number four. Oh, it's a good day, around Laying on the ground, yeah. grabbing at him. Very good. Uh, um, should we get a video question oh, yeah, I've got now? One. Yeah. What have you got, Sorry. Drew? Um, oh, just thinking about his hammy. Yeah. There we go. Uh, this one's from uh, Willie Genya. He sent one through all the way from uh, Japan. Hey, guys. Just wanted to ask you a question in regards to Super Rugby AU this weekend. Uh, they'll obviously be a, a champion. I just wanted to see what you guys think as far as how they compare to Super Rugby champions in Australia in years gone by. So, yeah, obviously, yeah with, with the, the, I guess, the change. In yeah. The, Will it mean as much? Yeah. Will it mean as much? Yeah. I, th I think to the players, we can't judge up because we don't know what they've gone through yeah. it would have been from the fans point of view you sound harsh by saying it but no like it's yeah. it, it, I, I don't mean, think really they're winning the Australian yeah they're winning the Australian conference, conference yeah. which is you know, which is great but at the same time I think deep down like when you come back to say 10 years time you never really got to test yourself against the Kiwis or the Sappers or you know the Argentinians so yeah what do you think he just wants us to say 
2011 was something special. Yeah. <laughs> the win against yeah. the Crusaders. Yeah. And, it, it and that was. It was. Yeah. That, was I mean, that was a record yeah. ratings game. Yeah. 550 odd thousands. That took years for that record to be broken yeah. in terms of people watching at home. You winning it against the uh, Crusaders in 2014. I mean, they were, they were pretty I mean, They were monumental. They were oh, like yeah, test huge. matches. And, but, but I think if any time there's silverware on, yeah. on the yes. line, these teams this week will be... Preparing it'll be a great game. You know, super it'll, be yeah. super, it'll be an awesome and match. And the sad thing is, like, they got to play in front of 15,000 last week at Suncorp. There's only, is it 6,000 6, 6, out in yeah. Canberra? So out Monday, that, that's right? what yeah. makes the grand final so special, I really, is the week leading up to it, the, the hype, and that happened in Brisbane in 2011, yeah. happened in Sydney in 14. That that was what I feel sorry for these guys they're missing out on. So, yeah. you know, there's, sure, there's going to be heaps of support for them, but not actually physically sitting in the stands. So... Um, but yeah, to those players, it'll mean something. Yeah, yeah. definitely mean a lot to them. Achievement, of course. Yeah. Um, Sean, there's a question for you. My one centred on uh, NRC. This comes from Nicholas Hill. Probably not the right man to go to around this because <laughs> I've been on the slide for a while now on that front. Uh, do I think that the NRC should continue? So many Wallabies in the squad sh- uh, played and developed in the NRC. It'd be criminal to end something that has just started to pay off. Uh, Nick, you weren't with me in some of the darkest moments of the NRC <laughs> where everyone had given up. Bar me and my co-commentators. Oh, you had given up. Oh, 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 oh. Drew Mitchell and Lou Ransom. I was with you having a bad tie oh. down in Melbourne. Was a, <laughs> that was the was day three after. men and a dog. <laughs> yeah, you were broken. Yeah. And it didn't even go to air. Yeah, it didn't even go um, it, 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 It's right. It yeah, didn't even make it to TV. Uh, I mean, I just can't see coming back post-COVID. I just don't see how it eventuates. The budgets have been pulled back yeah. every yeah. which way. What I would like to see as a replacement to it is more cohesion between state coaches yeah. and club coaches. Mm. Yeah. So that there is a more more of a two-way street. Leave some squad spots open so club competitions in Melbourne, Canberra, Sydney, Perth, yeah. wherever, can lead to super rugby well, representation. I was saying to someone just this week, uh, nine or ten years ago when I used to do Shoot Shield, someone would play really well on the weekend in a shoot game, then be brought into the Waratahs squad during the week and then be sitting on the bench for the Waratahs the Saturday after. That hasn't happened happened for, for yeah. years, yeah. has it? Yeah. Yeah, I think, again, it goes to the, the, the five teams yeah. and the, yeah, it's, it's very different what it is now. Again, you see guys playing more super games than they are playing club games. It's the, it's the way it is. I still think, in answer to that one, the NR, in replacing the NRC, we've got some fantastic clubs. Like, every every state has... You, you can know, still bring them to a semi-pro level. And they're yeah. already training yeah. three, four times a week yeah. these club sides. There's got to be something more we can do with our club But teams. you see what I mean? Like yeah. cohesion between... So Brad Thorne sits down with the coach at Brothers and goes, who have you got coming through? Yeah. Let's yeah. take a look at but it. But there's also a bit more tribalism in the club yeah. Like yeah. already that exists. Yeah. No one really... But what into it. Latched onto the yeah, that whole thing about all, all these players that. came through the yeah. NRC. Well, they had to they had they to had come to like through somewhere, somewhere, you know. Yeah. Like, so I don't, I don't, I don't think the NRC actually made too many of these Wallabies better footy players. I think they've become better footy players because they've been at their super sides, yeah. or they're yeah, you know, they're already naturally good footy players anyway. Yeah. Um, there's a question. I'm not sure who it's from, but I think it was on Twitter to you, Drew, or just about Drew. <laughs> Is there anyone in Australian rugby that's more of a party boy than? Than this oh, guy. Oh, currently okay. or previously, like there's been some good party boys over the years, and sadly they are all Drew's friends. Like that's probably why he's like, yeah, you know, like always at the back of the paper, never at the front. <laughs> Look, I, I resent that. Like I don't know where you could get such bullshit. I don't know why that sort of stuff comes up. Like, yeah, is something Standard prepared earlier. Tuesday night. Uh, yeah. Biggest party boy. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> yeah, who would yeah, have thought? Yeah, it's Drew. Yeah. Yeah. Joe Roth would have done that in half the time. Yeah, I know. Be better, Drew. Yeah. Hang on. Does it? <laughs> Next question. Yeah. On that note, let's wrap it, shall we, guys, yeah, for not? this week. Uh, Drew Mitchell, Stephen Hoyle, Sean Maloney, thanks so much for your company. Thanks for your company at home, wherever you're watching as well. Or listening, we're a podcast too. Make sure you check the episode out on Rugby Pass as well. We'll see you next time. Ha, 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 ha.